Now, this is not the most critical issue in the world. Why was Abraham chosen? Why were we chosen? But if you want to know from a Jewish perspective, one of our main issues with the New Testament is what the New Testament teaches about the obligation to keep the Torah. Let's just look at a few passages. Again, there are many, many passages. We just chose a few here. I want you to first understand, and I want you to listen carefully to me, that it's quite possible, it's quite possible that Jesus of history, not the Jesus that Christians believe in, it's quite possible that Jesus of history himself never intended to start another religion, never intended to abolish the Torah, and there seems to be good reason to believe that Jesus and his immediate followers were Torah-observant Jews. We have many other lectures that you can listen to on this topic, but it seems, at least prima facie, that the earliest movement of Jesus and his students did not come to negate the Torah. But what happens is, pretty clearly, that Paul, who again writes most of the New Testament, Paul, someone who never met Jesus, never met Jesus, becomes the primary teacher of what Christianity became. Meaning Christianity is not really based upon the teachings of Jesus. There's very little in Christianity based upon the teachings of Jesus. Christianity is based upon the teachings about Jesus by people who never met him, like Paul. So what happens is, when Paul has his run-ins, when Paul meets up with those original followers of Jesus who knew Jesus and walked with Jesus, they're suspicious of him. And one of the reasons that they were suspicious of him, you'll see right here, they say in Acts chapter 21, and they are informed about you, Paul, that you teach all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Paul we're hearing about you, that you're teaching the Jewish people in the diaspora, because Paul did not hang out in Israel. Paul left Israel to go around the diaspora, the Greco-Roman communities, to preach his vision of who Jesus was. And these followers of Jesus, the ones that knew Jesus and walked with Jesus, they're saying to Paul, wait, Paul, we're hearing about you, that you're teaching the Jewish people who are among the Gentiles in the diaspora to forsake Moses, not to observe the Torah anymore, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. This is a rumor they were hearing about Paul. Now why in the world would they hear such a rumor? Maybe because that's what was going on. But let's let Paul now speak for himself. And again, I could have quoted a hundred verses for you that we'd be here for all week. I just selected a few. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. I'm sorry, that's Romans chapter 3. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, You are not under the law. law well, again, law for him means Torah. In Greek, the word law is nomos. Nomos is the Greek translation of Torah. So Paul says you are not under the Torah, but under grace. For the law of the Spirit in the life of Messiah Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Again, Paul says in Romans chapter 10, For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Paul, faith in the Messiah replaces performance of the mitzvot. He writes in Galatians chapter 3, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. I like to, I would translate, anyone have a bike when they were kids with training wheels? Right, you had a two-wheel bike, but you couldn't ride a two-wheel bike, so you put on training wheels? That's what he's saying. He's saying the Torah was our schoolmaster. It was a training wheels to do what? To bring us to faith in the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We throw away the training wheels. We don't need them anymore. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 5, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with which Messiah has made us free, 
and not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say to you, if you be circumcised, Messiah shall benefit you nothing. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, for he, referring to Jesus, is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. By the way, that's the, that's the wall between Jews and Gentiles. It's teaching here that Jesus broke down the wall between Jews and Gentiles. How? By abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances. And finally, the book of Hebrews chapter 8, quoting a passage in the book of Jeremiah, which speaks about God making a new covenant. So the author of Hebrews says, when he said a new covenant, he made the first one old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. So you see that if the people in Jerusalem were suspicious of Paul, who did not seem to be a big Torah observant dude, you see that Paul basically was teaching this very openly. From a Jewish point of view, listen carefully, this would be just about the greatest indictment of the New Testament. Why? Because we heard with our own ears, basically, Moses telling us, look, God is commanding you to keep the dietary laws, to observe Shabbat, to check your clothing for shotness. All the laws of the Jewish scriptures, God commanded us. And now Paul is coming along, and Paul is saying, but I say to you, you don't have to do it anymore. So we would like, very justifiably say to Paul, why on God's wonderful earth should I believe a word that you're saying? If God spoke to the entire Jewish nation publicly and told us on Monday that we have to make sure we don't eat shrimp, and you, Paul, are telling us on Thursday, guess what? God told me to tell all of you you can eat shrimp now. So why should we believe Paul? The truth is that we know the one thing that would clearly tell you that someone is not a true prophet, one of the things that would make us clearest that they're not a true prophet is if they contradict previous revelation, which you know to be true. So if we know that God commanded us to observe the Sabbath forever, and Paul says, well, you don't got to do it anymore, we say, okay, end of the story.